Okay, well, it looks like some of the items uh, from the weekend pick already sold. This uh, motorcycle helmet and Arthur Fulmer AF40 helmet with the gold wings on there it was in pretty good condition. It definitely has a, some blemishes. Uh, listed that quickly for 200 bucks. <clears throat> Got an offer of 170. I took that, and uh, it's going to go to Thailand via California. And we got test trips sold real quick, and the Macy Harris thermometer that still works but looks bad and rusty. Got for five bucks, sold for 80 plus shipping quick. Today, in the dark, <laughs> bad lighting on the crazy picker life. With Wheeler, Dealer, and Banana Peeler. Welcome fellow pickers and would-be adventurers. Long intro. Dealer here with the Crazy Picker Life Tuesday edition. Well, when you pick some fairly unique items or good items, or you pick and choose and really get some good ones, uh, some of those are going to sell quick. Some of those are going to sell within hours. Some are going to sell overnight you don't necessarily know how to price all of those I've had good luck with the uh, Arthur Fulmer AF40 helmets I've had a few of those over the years some in better condition it's hard to judge the market this particular one sells really well some of them in better condition with that particular uh, flare on there will sell into the two three four hundred dollar range this one was a small size and it, like I said, it had some blemishes and the inside was uh, deteriorating. The uh, Macy Harris thermometer is a tractor brand. It's actually going somewhere in Kansas, from Kansas. So that's interesting. Uh, could I have gotten more for it? Maybe. I don't know. It's, it's not a, a super old one. It's probably from the 80s and it's been rusted but it still works so it has a neat look I bought for five dollars I'll sell it for 80 plus shipping quick that's fine with me okay so this uh, video is going to go right into our Saturday return from picking and Wheeler and I are going to show you what we found these two items sold so I just wanted to give you a preview back tomorrow with a regular vlog there's Wheeler. Yeah, fresh out of the shower. And with a oh. crazy voice. There you go. Yeah, he's sick. And here's Dealer. So we are on Saturday night time here. Fresh back from the Highway 36 treasure hunt. Yeah, did we find any treasure? And we're going to show you some treasure here. Uh, we got to set it up on the chute. And there's stuff. There's a helmet. I'll talk about that in a minute. There's stuff down in there. There's some goodies here. There's one tote, two totes, three totes, four totes, five totes. Oh, I was gonna have woot here, but I can't even do high notes. Man, you sound good. I go. Okay, back in a flash, we're gonna try to set this stuff up and show you what we bought along with the prices we paid. You be the judge. Okay, so uh, Wheeler and I have been together in the car. We took the Jeep on this trip for 48 hours and <laughs> we had a lot of fun actually. We didn't fight at all or anything. Now we're fighting. <laughs> <laughs> so let's look at some stuff with Wheeler. <sighs> We're not really fighting, but I yeah. forget, what no, were, we're going. We're going Logan Paul and up in here. What were we fighting about? <laughs> I don't remember, but whatever. Yeah. Oh, putting the things back in boxes and stuff. Oh, I'm just that. trying to close it out. It, this stuff is uh, is certainly have some moldiness, and we're all roadworthy. Road roadworthy. Yeah, we're all roadworthy at this point. Road weary. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, we tried to fit it all on the table. We couldn't. There's more here than I thought. Uh, we, we're going to do this. 
we're going to tell you how much we paid and if you want to look stuff up that's cool you know and then you can comment if you'd like to comment there's some really good stuff here i'm going to say good on some things i'm going to say yeah it's all right on a couple things what are yeah you, what well are, i'd like to say this was a fun trip for fun items for fun people so it's not quite the same as a normal have to make fifty thousand times our money every buy well no but we did really well we did do very well no no i'm not we, i'm not saying that i'm just saying there's a couple items no. here that weren't 100 percent research and well that's fine. when you pick we picked a total of what say 20 hours yeah 15 20 small. hours of picking actual picking mm-hmm a lot of driving so i don't know how that actually figures out yep but uh you go through different moods and sometimes you pick stuff up you you wouldn't yep <laughs> anyway well i mean the thing is we're picking up stuff we wouldn't most of the time here and that's why we go on these trips for fun oh yeah yeah no 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 but no not a, not no a, we yeah. really didn't pick up that much bad yeah so here's some plain boxes these are models from the i don't know 60s 50s they're cool boxes. Uh, one of them had a bunch of decals in them. Didn't pay a lot. Wheeler said he paid ten for his camera. Yeah. And I guess I paid ten for those two boxes. So that's fine. I paid five dollars. I like this model. I didn't look it up yet. It's a Ford F two fifty pickup. It is new in there. Paid five bucks. Little water damage. Oh, the KO stands for it. I've seen those before on old trucks. That's kind of cool. Yeah, it's a bigger there. box. Uh, I don't, you know, I I may only get fifteen or twenty plus shipping. I don't care. It's really cool. This is interesting. This is a new in package from nineteen what eighty eight. Nineteen eighty eight Chrysler Motors printed in USA. New in uh, new in package a four barrel three eighty three cover for the air cleaner above the four barrel. Apparently these sell on Mopar's website. Yep, that's what I was seeing. Right now for 50 bucks plus shipping. Yep. Which is really odd. None available in this style on eBay right now or Amazon. Yep. Uh, Pay 20. I think we're gonna get the 50, but whatever. <laughs> How much go. camera can you get for 25 cents? So the 25 cent movie camera there it from is. Konica. This is one down price over the last couple of years, all the way from ten dollars to eight dollars to four dollars, and this year finally twenty five cents. Oh, we've been watching that. Been one. watching this one. It's in nineteen eighty one. It's in really nice shape. It's a plug and play movie camera. Well, that's the weirdest thing because you think of a lawnmower mm -hmm. and you think of gas motor for the most part. Yep. Whoever has a movie camera, this is not. This is not a. Uh, what's the tape? It's not a video camera. Yeah, it is. Oh, it's a video camera? I thought it was a movie camera. Well, I don't Film. Know. Uh, no, compact video camera. Oh, never No, mind. early video camera. So here's how it worked. They didn't have the battery on board, and they did not have the VHS slash Betamax slash whatever you want to record to on board. You actually plug this into your recorder splitter, and then you plug that into a battery pack and into a VHS pack, which you wear on your shoulder. If you want to go portable, otherwise you can go to studio and you can record it like that. It's like the TV camera is a small version of that. I think we were fighting about this. We were? Yeah, because why buy it? Look at it. It's beautiful. Yeah. It's like the coolest looking camera I've seen all day. If we get 20 cents. bucks plus shipping, I'm going to be... In, I don't care what we get for it. 25 cents, that's a deal. Oh my gosh. So <laughs> I'm your money at 25 I bucks. would normally pick up cool things like Datsuns and uh, Nissans, and these are the most beautiful police cars I've ever seen with those Japanese rotating crazy lights on the top. Yep. Uh, as you can see, $2, and I don't know what was on $2. that. $2. It's, it's about what we paid. Yep. Uh, these are fairly scarce. I think... The batteries under there, you put the batteries in, they, they move, the lights go on, they uh, have a wheel under there that may rotate them, turn them. It doesn't matter. Yep. They're, they're, they're cool. They're pretty cool. Cool vintage. Uh, race car I paid 10 bucks for. Yeah. yeah. It's okay. Maybe they don't like, like, like that one, but yeah. Uh, made in Taiwan, 80s. Don't care. This we didn't look up. I was hoping wow. we could, but... This is a Ferrari Turbo 126K, 1981. The weird thing about this thing, it looks like it's made in France or Italy, I don't know. 
The weird thing about this, it's a kit in there, but it's all like little metal pieces and rubber wheels. It's really weird. Wheeler's going to try to look it up, but um, I really like that. I paid virtually nothing for it, maybe a dollar. Yeah. Oh, this is an unknown. Number 124. This throws us for a loop that it says 1897. Oh, 126K. Odense Steel Shipyard, Odense, Denmark. It is brass. It's heavy. It's a ship tag of some kind. Either a dock tag when they're making it, a ship tag when it's on the ship, some kind of repro, but it's brass. And it's got some age, and it's weird. We can't figure it out. Uh, paid 50 bucks, and some have sold for double, triple, or more that. There's just not a lot of information. There's not a lot. So that's a wild card. It really is. It's, it's sort of neat, and it sort of goes. Now, this alone, I'll show you, I'll show you another item in a minute. This alone we would not have just bought, probably. But I'm going to show you another item, and there were some other things there, collectible things that were high-end and ship-related that added legitimacy to this thing. So maybe we'll try to figure more out and report later. What do you got? One unsold for 40 plus shipping, and that's all I can find. I found some decal sets being sold from Italy. Yeah. And that's about it. So it may have bad keywords or something. Oh yeah, and that was really generically weirdly listed. Yeah, so. it's a really neat little odd. kit. I may pull it out of there and look at it and show it off. So Bed Ford Flex. One of the most $2. fragile and weird cameras ever made. Made in Hong Kong. One of probably 10 cameras historically to ever be made in Hong Kong. So Wheeler liked this thing. He yep. pulled it out of there in the Jeep. It popped open. The mirror popped off. Oh no, it's already popped off when he bought it. Another piece popped off it and flew under the Jeep. Yep. And it was a disaster. You couldn't close it. And it's just ridiculous. We sold one falling apart for 20 bucks, and that one probably go for 50 with the box or 40 with the box just because it's it's rare. And they are known for every one being broken. Every single one. They're, they're broken, like, brand new in box. They're like a tourist camera. It's a toy camera. Who knows? That's ridiculous. Look at it. I mean, look at the box. It's I like cool. it. I like it. But it, from the 60s. It's, it's caused us some trouble. It's just like anything from the 60s. From okay, the so cheap let's cool. see here. We've got, uh, we've got this oh, Master Battle. Oh, Battle Masters. That thing is heavy. Yeah, it is. No, no, okay. Careful. I got it. Uh, the Epic Game of Fantasy <laughs> Battles. <laughs> I haven't cataloged the parts in here yet. I think I paid 10 or 15. Yep. 15, let's say. Um, lots of parts. It's a battle game. Supposedly they're all there. So I'm counting on them all being there close. Uh, pretty good, pretty good game from, yep. the, from the 80s or early 90s. You can stick that back on there carefully. Uh, ready Bolt. This is a cardboard type sign. I like those. They are oddball. Cardboard does not sell necessarily as good as metal. But we got that. Cardboard thick, thick sort of, uh, it's not really cardboard. No, it's that wooden type material. Like press pegboard, board, pegboard, that's what it is. Pegboard. Yeah. We got that. <laughs> And the two cars, and something else. Camera. A camera. Where's the camera? Oh, um, let's try to check here. That one, VR35. That one, VR35 for ten bucks. Made in Japan. Ten yeah. bucks, right? Yep. So all those four items for ten bucks. Uh, a couple of Beatles, both in questionable condition. Both have a little age to them. This one's really cool because it has the rally front on it. Mm -hmm. uh, cameras, you want to say anything about your cameras here? Real decent cameras, and this one is one we have never seen in our many, many years of camera thing. There's rust right here, there's broken springs, the lens is probably full of, oh, it actually what focuses. What is it? Uh, Pentax, Acai Flex, Acai from, Pentax. From the 40s, right? 40s and 50s is when they made these. So it is it is worth some reasonable money. Yep. So we paid what? what? Carefully. $20. $20. Uh, it's in... in Reasonably poor condition, yeah, but it's very scarce. All the way. And like Wheeler yeah. said, we've probably bought 
a few thousand actual cameras, maybe as many as 5,000, I don't know, and we've never seen one. Hmm, one's not coming up there, I'm gonna be, yeah. care I'll carefully remove that. So I paid 20 point. bucks for that. This one was $10 yep. on the other side of those two boxes. That's pretty decent. And that one's pretty decent. We're not giving you dollar figures, but when we say decent, we mean it. I mean, um, we know cameras though, this is, this is Canon's we're not pretty trying good. To buy, this is Kodak's reasonable. And where's that other good one you said? <coughs> Which one's a good one? Oh, oh that one. Yep. Okay. Nearly mint condition. Uh, paid eight bucks. Eight bucks. You told me that one's over a hundred bucks. Yeah, I said fifteen and one, just to divide it more evenly. Oh, whatever. So you said that's worth. It. It's gonna sell for over a yeah. hundred. Pretty good. Pretty yep. good. Pretty good. Okay, but what did we pay for these? Oh, that was dollar and the dollar. Pro okay. Yeah, dollar on that one. Kawhi MS twenty. Did you look that up? Yep. Okay, we paid what for that keyboard? A couple bucks. Two bucks, something like that. Two, yeah, bucks, two bucks with with the with adapter. The DC adapter. Real nice shape, no corrosion in the battery compartment. Some sort of gas lantern with a good bubble glass on there. I, you know, it's got to be house mounted. I don't know. It said thirty-five dollars on it, and this person was just trying to liquidate stuff. So I got that for five bucks, mm, along with another deal. another uh, neat item I'll show for five dollars. Here's the first set of Bose speakers. These are Bose Model 141. Uh, I paid zero for those, really. Yeah, <laughs> freebie. Pretty much, pretty much zero for those. Bundle master. And where is it? What else? Oh, zero for this. Yeah. But because those were in a lot, I might as well show them off. Those were in a lot with these Bose 901s, which if you look up Bose 901s or no. Uh, Bose 901s. These are heavy as all get out, and even in the condition they're in, one's missing a grill. Everything else looks like it's there. They are from probably the 70s, maybe the late 60s. I don't know, but look up Bose 901s if you don't know about them. They're kind of a pain in the butt to ship. I paid thirty dollars for the Bose 901s, and along with them, I got the other Bose and that little. Car. Yeah. So that's a pretty good deal. Uh, early in the game, I bought a Citizen Band antenna new in package from Japan. Probably not my best buy because it's a pain to ship. Five bucks is what I paid. Mm -hmm. All right. Talk about your GPSs. A Rand McNally TND80 trucker tablet thing. It's kind of like an Android tablet that also will navigate you into GPS. Either. Tough. Crazy thing. Tough negotiations. Mm -hmm. uh, Seriously. Uh, you know, they wanted over a hundred for it. They said they go for over two hundred new. We see them all over the map, but pretty much up there. This one is low usage. It does work. Reasonably new. We paid sixty. Mm -hmm. And what's that one? Uh, new V40 LM, supposedly brand new in there, it is not brand new, it's probably taken out, used once or twice, whatever, $4 on that one. I think we paid 5 5 Nope, negotiations were again. Yeah, yeah, we paid 5 It's actually a pretty good one because we think it has the lifetime maps. Pretty modern and it's the lifetime map one. We don't, we don't buy a lot of uh, GPSs anymore because everybody's using their phone or many people, but there are still GPSs out there, especially if they're closer to new. My nose is uh, hating some of this moldy stuff. Uh, closer to new, and then certainly the the super size screen ones, and some of the trucker ones are definitely worth it. Yep. Just double checking and scam us there and pull a bait and switch. Ooh, yeah. I just came up with that since it looks slightly used. Yeah. Some. Nope. It is. We ran into probably how many items where the. Uh, the item that was the box was not in there. Oh, Ooh, what I did mean, you do? Uh, that's how it was. That's it how it was. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, we found a lot of bait and switch items. That's just happened. Okay, calligraphy. Yep. Uh, Pelican Graphos, made in Germany, kind of like a I don't know engineer's pen set, yeah, pen set. The other one's new in there. Three, four yep. bucks. What did we pay? Three, four three, bucks. Four. Uh, yeah, I think it was. Ooh, negotiations are tough on this one again. I think it was like five or something for both. No, it was either three four, or four, three, whatever. Three or four. Somewhere there. You had a cube in there too. Yeah. I think. Well, I was expecting this to be 25 cents and that would be like a dollar, so. Well, whatever. I started with a dollar for both. Uh, You know, that's just one of those buys that you go a place and you're not buying anything else. You feel like buying something, there it is, whatever. 
Uh, brand new, $20, our best offer. I wish they went and wrote on the dang box, but these are actually reasonably good boots until Wheeler told me they're, Walmart they're from Walmart.com, but still, steel toe. steel toe, blah, blah, blah. Um, they're, you know, they're pretty decent. Yeah, real nice pair of Main USA, uh, what do they call it, Air Force combat boots, too. For yourself. Myself, brand new. Yeah, these are bucks. these are pretty good. <laughs> anyway, okay, uh, lighting is not perfect here, but this is the other nautical piece that we got that sort of justifies the other one. This is, you will not find these very often. This is a logo meter, which shows revolutions. I can only assume, no, there you I go. Know if that helps. I don't know, sort of. A lot of revolutions on there, by the way. There's some other weird little pieces of uh, something in there, but revolutions of the uh, revolutions per minute of the uh, the drive shaft on a boat, big yeah, whatever that big was boat, the prop McNab of Bridgeport, Bridgeport, Connecticut. This thing is heavy, super heavy. Like it's made heavy. It's from the twenties. And we did a little research on it. You can find a little bit. There's one sold at some auction site a few years back. I paid two hundred and twenty-five dollars for that. Yep. Also, forget model two, three, four, and five. This is model one. Yeah. The the boat collectors out there, people who collect anchors and boat pieces and gauges and stuff like this, this thing is uh, this thing is the cat's meow. I, I expect to do quite well on that, and I may have to wait, but uh, I did spend $225. This is sitting, not necessarily at a rummage sale, but it's sitting out in the middle of nowhere, which is cool. It's got this shaft on it. I had to that, call the buyer to go hardball negotiation. Well, also. they wanted $300, and uh, they were at some kind of eye appointment an hour away, and they left somebody they knew with this stuff, which is kind of crazy in itself, but... He calls them, and the the <laughs> the spouse, the wife, is like two fifty. Is that what she said? Yeah, two fifty. And the guy's on the phone with her, and I'm like, yeah, I was at two hundred, and I'm like, I'll do two twenty. And and he hung up with her after talking. He said the the husband was in the background yelling three hundred. We got three hundred on it. Don't take it three hundred. <laughs> and she said two twenty five, and so. We went for that. Um, I, I have high hopes for this. I may talk about it. Who knows? Uh, it is heavy. It's got to be. It's got to be 25 or more pounds, 30 pounds. I mean, it is a solid, crazy uh, piece. It's off a ship that's probably uh, a steel ship, 100 or more feet. I mean, it's a. It's off a big ship. And the only time you get these kind of things, we we thought about this, talked about it. Is when a ship is is basically scrapped and decommissioned. Yeah, so. I mean, give it nautical auctions, that type of thing. But obviously, those will command a premium. Yeah, it's not so. something you're going to find out in the middle of nowhere like this. Yeah, uh, a couple of weird clocks that Wheeler picked up for next to nothing and a radio. Uh, this was also there a Sony okay, Amazon. a Sony Car Ready CD Walkman. It is new in there. The cases, uh, the pl plastic is a little bit cracked i'm i'm 95 percent it's all new in there i still have to to look it over but these actually are listed for crazy prices um what did we pay for that stuff not much it was, it was name your price so like two or three dollars no was there was there more than three pieces i'm not sure i remember the sale and it was less than like. 10 and it might have been four or five yeah it was nothing she said, name your price, whatever. Well, some people, it's weird, because some people actually, uh, as they you... Talk themselves down. They talk themselves yeah. down. Uh -huh. it's, it's really insane. It is. Uh, and so, you know, we scanned that on Amazon. I forget what they were listed. Somewhere uh, around 200 bucks. It was 200 crazy. bucks is crazy. Uh -huh. And then used ones started at 40 or something. Yep. And so, you know, they, I'm prepared to pay 10, 15 bucks or, or whatever. But she talked herself down right away, so I just, you know, what are you going to do? Uh, this is kind of neat. It is a Macy Harris, which is a tractor thermometer, and it is beat. It is rusty as all get out. The glass is good on it. It's uh, I don't, it's not really a cheapie, but they gave them away with stuff. 
it's still at 73 degrees in here. It's registering the correct temperature, which makes it even better. Can't find any. Uh, paid five bucks. That was five bucks for that, which was hanging on the wall. They said, "Hey, it's our last year. We've been here forever. It's over." And then I think the I think the husband died. Yeah, he that's, that's what happened. He there. showed us around the was it a spoon museum? What kind of museum? A tool museum? He had all kinds of stuff in there. I forget. Yeah, I do sort of remember that. It was sort of weird. It was yeah. out in the middle of nowhere, but he had collected uh, like planes, like wood planes, were oh, yeah. in there. He had a bunch of stuff in there. Yep. He was gone, and so this was the last year for her. She was, she was, there's some really neat people, but she was probably in her 80s or, you know, late 80s. So, anyway, five bucks. And she, she again, just, she was like, we got to get rid of all this stuff. I asked her, what do you want for it? She's like, I, I don't know, I just need to get rid of it. And so you just throw out a number, you know, five bucks. Five bucks. Belt buckles. This is kind of neat, though. This is for the... The brights on a car, you put that down on the floor where the, the floor bright clicker is and you kick it with your foot. Made in Taiwan, it's kind of neat. Paid uh, four bucks. Belt buckles all over the place. I got a Fiero one, I paid five for some of these belt buckles. Here's a pretty cool motorcycle one, I like those. Uh, these paid a dollar each. And some of these are actually uh, pretty good. Like this one is. Uh, read that. I didn't look it up, but it's. NTA3 Union Carbide. Union Carbide. We've had that one before, and that one sold for pretty good money. Uh, another. I did pay five bucks for a vintage Studebaker one. That's a real niche one. You've got uh, Peerless Faucet. And this one is actually probably my favorite. It's. I don't know, it's really rough, weird. I believe to be a Bowie knife on there. Some kind of crazy knife. If you wore that, boy, it's like bringing a knife to a gunfight. But you have a Dagger tattoo. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this one's also kind of neat. Pirate tattoo. It's got a boxing glove and it's large on it. Mm -hmm. Hey, hi, Elizabeth. Are you going to bed? Okay. Okay, and then a uh, new in package. I did pay $5 each for these that are marked 10 for Buffalo Bills and New York Giants and usually those sell. Oh, we got that Wordomatic somewhere too. Yep. That's the other thing that That's we like got. In here. Yep. Yeah, it was like five bucks for the four pieces Word yep. Wordomatic, which is looks pretty cool in there. 1971 or something like that. Probably not worth much, but kind of cool. Yep. I haven't looked it up. Who knows? Don't care. And there is some uh discrepancy on the fifteen dollars where actually let's see what did I get? I've got and this was a, a a nice old man. He's in his 80s. He had about 150 bicycles there, and didn't know why he wasn't going to get on the American Pickers. And we talked to him a while. He had this marked at half price at 750, and then he wanted a couple bucks for the red beetle. And I just said, "How about 10 bucks?" Because I knew this was uh, Arthur Fulmer, Fulmer, Arthur Fulmer, and it's a. Uh, something 40 what's that called AF 40 it's an AF 40 helmet with the eagle wing on it in a small size now these are listed all over the place so I'm gonna have to figure it out but there was one that sold for $240 not listed two sold both at auction 20 bid something 240 and 250 plus shipping yeah the Arthur Fulmer exact thing. helmets the the AF 40 is how it is yeah uh, they're always good. I always, always, always pick those up. And the crazier they are, the better. So I, I don't know what that'll sell, but for ten bucks, uh, that's a good one. Yep. Here's a PlayStation Two with a major weird crinkle in it, for a dollar. Schminkled the crinkle. Okay, so we will. We still have the mystery car tote, which we have to give a shout out to uh, Greg. By the way. A couple of uh, people that recognized us out on the, the picking trail. They may or may not see this. Uh, Greg, who we met at Stores Auction House in Smith Center, went and got a great deal on a sign from this, uh, this vendor that he ran into. And he told us where it was. We were headed back that way tonight. We stopped in and we bought this huge car score, which I'll show. 
and we also got the uh, Bose speakers set up for thirty dollars. <laughs> so uh, big shout out to Greg from Oklahoma. Thanks, Greg. He said he paid uh, twenty dollars for a polarine porcelain sign, like a. I don't know if it was a big circular one. I didn't see it, but something like that. Well, Wheeler and I had this discussion about people out there that, for whatever reason, are pushed over the edge or have some sort of a uh, awakening moment where they just decide to get rid of all their cool stuff. And this guy just, I mean. He was on it. He was well, there. I didn't push him at all. He just he just wanted to give stuff away practically. The speakers a, weren't even out or for sale. And well, they were deeper in the garage. And there were, what are those other ones that were there? Akai? Sansui. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Sansui. S-A-N-S-U-I. Yeah. I know they're high end, but they were too big. We couldn't fit them in the Jeep. So yep. whatever. Maybe we'll get them next year. I don't know. But I, I know that that brand also can bring some money. And we had to make a choice. And I know the Bose 901s are easily even in this condition of you know a few hundred dollars and this was plus late. shipping this was a late on a saturday well this is That's after crazy. the sale's been going for a few days which uh -huh. is just ridiculous so let's we're gonna switch stuff over and the okay so we pulled the rest of the stuff out so that first set of stuff was really i mean both Wheeler and I are pretty drained, and we brought Squealer with us. I felt like filming when we were out there. Part of me did, but then we just have to concentrate on having fun driving and the actual picking. And, of course, people come up to us and want to chat with us a little bit. And so filming, just it's just too much. But um, that stuff we had in the first pass through there that was all pretty good stuff it really was there's some really nice pieces in there there's some good uh money making pieces this next stuff uh you know it's just sometimes it just amazes me what uh <laughs> what we find and and this you know these things are really good that we're going to show you here some of these things are really good but it's really it also comes down to what we paid for it, it you know it's well, a lot of, that's the deal with garage sales for the most part. That's the deal with garage sales. Is there's really good stuff. We're used to paying up for really good stuff, and I'm not afraid to do that, especially in the camera arena and even other things. But we got a lot of these things for a really good deal. Are you ready to go, or are you looking? I was looking about this Mito wallet. You're looking up an advertisement for it, so you can compare the price of Rolex. Okay. I'm just curious. Well, I'm gonna roll. Are you ready? Yep. Okay. So, a couple. Pretty crazy stories, I think. One I already talked about, but I'll talk about it again in a minute. So we roll up to one of our favorite places out there. I've bought some dealership cars. I've bought some other stuff there that's just... It's overflow from some collector. And I've never really understood what's, what's going on there. And I still don't understand it. So we pull up to this place. We're like, okay, here it is. I like going here. Hopefully we find some cool things. We've got some really cool things here for good money, uh, you know, inexpensive money. So we pull up, and they have, I don't know, they have a, a good size area kind of cordoned off, and you can go in there. They've got a Goodyear sign there, Goodyear tires. They've got some other stuff that's pretty cool. They've got watches and car parts and toys and things like that. As I'm walking up there, I walk around the corner, and on this particular corner, this is a business area. There's a a, a garbage can, right? Yeah. It's got a it's it's a mesh garbage can. It's got a top on it. And Wheeler, I think you walked by it first, mm -hmm. and you th saw something in there. And then I walked by it. And I'm like, there's there's some cars in there. There's a there's a there's a tote of cars in there and I look in there and I'm like, geez, I don't really want to dig in the garbage, but you know, is this, is this too good to be true? I look around a little bit. There's two, three people work in this area selling stuff. There's a few people buying stuff. It's wide open. It's Saturday. It's 10 o'clock in the morning. I pull out this flat with these four cars right here and a phone somebody threw them out and I'm, I'm starting to be i'm starting to look at these and i'm like 
these are pretty cool. What, what, why would somebody throw these out? I'm like, okay, they're plastic, but why would somebody throw these out? This is from 1970. Uh, it's got a shifter on it that breaks off for every single person you'd ever want to use this thing. It's Craigston. It says 1970, made in USA on it. It works. You Here, hold this. You do this, and it takes off. Yeah. Every kid wants that. That's the coolest thing. So that's a Mustang or a, a Camaro. I can't tell which. It doesn't say on it. These are Corvettes. This one, the handles broke off. Craigston, 1970. This is the same thing. You can see the pink handle on there. It's Craigston, 1970. Uh, I start freaking out. I'm like, I mean, this, I'm offended. I'm like, I'm like, who the blank threw this stuff away? Who threw these car, who threw these cars away? They just threw away a fifty-dollar bill, and I'm looking around. I'm like. Uh oh, I better not say it like this because I just offended these people I want to go shop with. I mean, I, I said, I, I, I think I said, who the F is an idiot that threw these out? Yeah. And then I'm like, they just threw away a, an F and $50 bill at least. And then I walked back and, and I looked, you know, I looked at the underneath of them to make sure they weren't like McDonald's Happy Meal <laughs> toys or something. Yeah. And it said Craigston 1970, made in USA. And I noticed the handle on there, and I'm like, it's two Corvettes and a freaking Mustang or whatever. It is a Mustang. Okay. The back headlight. Uh, so, you know, as I'm walking to the Jeep to put these away, which is parked right in front of their thing, I'm thinking to myself, that wasn't quite the way to handle it. But I, I was offended. I could not believe that somebody would throw this out. I know what toys go for. That's ridiculous. And then there's this other Corvette, which is... And somebody does. I mean, 1970 toys that got broken easily. I mean, that's just crazy. Well, this is this is something plastics from the 70s. Yep. And it sells it, yeah. for 15 bucks plus shipping all day long. Um, these, we looked them up, That they will sell for 50 or more. Easy. Yep. The lot of three, probably a bit more than $50. Yeah, it's going to be listed at 60 or a little bit more plus shipping. And... So it's 50 to $100... Plus shipping, somebody threw these away. Uh -huh. They were thrown away. They were in the there was they were on the top, but the rest of the stuff below it was like smelly sh stuff, shit. It's like garbage. I, do, I, I dug them out of there. Am I crazy? Dumpster diving at the pick. It's a, well, it's it is twenty thirty feet from three guys that are selling stuff at this booth. Dumpster diving at the pick. One hundred dollars of stuff thrown away. There's your clickbait title. Good grief. So I just I, and so then I know I knew they heard me and I've bought some stuff there and they just give unbelievable prices and then and then I think the high prices came out. So I paid fifty five dollars for these brochures and items because I thought they were really cool. In fact, I thought these were really cool and you can't find much on these. Uh, these are Corvette or. Uh, Mustang 2s from the 70s, Ford Mustang 2. They're really, they're cardboardish. They got a, a dealership thing on one side. They got the dealer stamp. And they are fold-up cars fold that you punch glue. out, fold and glue, and then they're all the specs from it. And I got two of those. I got a Ford 57 brochure, another custom 300 Ford brochure, and another 57 Fairlane 500 brochure. Oh, <laughs> don't break your free finds. Dude. Yeah, and uh, unfortunately, a Hot Wheels uh, freebie that they gave out belt buckle that's not worth much. Yep. But so fifty-five dollars for all that. So I paid up a little bit for that. I'm still gonna do okay on that. Don't worry about a that. Plus. You can look all that stuff up. But this is sort of included in that, <laughs> and then I didn't make any friends. Yeah. Okay. Oh, and a translator and watch deal too. And uh, the City Phone SS is ten dollars heavy, and that should be pretty good too. Tube CB base unit. Yeah, that should be pretty good too. And then, along with this same booth, was a twenty-four watch yep. deal. I'm gonna buy probably five of those for myself, and then the rest are gonna be listed up. A dollar each is what we paid for these, and 
Just to give you an idea of what is on the really good end of the dollar each. Those are the two. Wheeler tells me that there's a 1981 Casio G-Shock with the metal back on there. Super gold. Super gold. So at one dollar, let's just say that is probably a hundred and fifty percent. No, <laughs> no, hundred and fifty percent would be a dollar fifty. Yeah. Uh, what is that? Thousand five hundred percent. Bezels are ninety nine percent gone on these uh, for the most part. So this one's even in fairly decent shape, surprisingly okay. for the age. Worst case, it's going to be a hundred dollars or more. Yep. And then the one on the right is a what brand? It's a Mito. And Mito was founded in 1918 in Switzerland. Right now, they're actually in the top 10 manufacturer watches in the world for chronometer certified watches, so basically high-end watches. And that right there, at, in the 40s and 50s when they sold that, it was half the price of a Rolex, which that means it's pretty expensive. Well, and so Rolexes, old ones, are super collectible. Yeah, it was around fifty dollars. Well, the Rolex was a hundred back and in the, the day. And what day is that? The twenties, forty something. Forties. Yep. So that should also be uh, an easy hundred or more. Yeah, at, I mean, yeah, at least. Yeah, we don't want to toot a horn. It's a Bumber Automatic Mido. Let's see what's the name on so there. So they didn't hate model. us too bad to give us that deal. Multi Fort. That's the name. They of just it. had like five big boxes of watches, and yep. you, and you looked through them. So twenty four dollars to a bunch of dollars. So good, yeah. good stuff there. Now the problem with watches is we never get around to listing them. So what are we? I'll gonna, list those two pretty quick. <laughs> we could list those. Oh, yeah, too. and actually this one's really cool too. It has kind of Western style band from the prior the thirties. I mean that band was put on there in the thirties probably. It's an Elgin, it's a lower end, but look at that thing. It runs. It's perfect. Nineteen thirties or yeah. earlier. I, I don't mind buying watches if they get listed. We have like two, two to four hundred watches in back stock. Yeah, this guy's a watch guy. He also found humor in the fake watches. This is from my collection. A Hamilton. It looks like Hamilton if you don't squint at it. Yeah, they, a Hamil Hamilton. From what year? That's so funny. Seventies. Okay. Yep. All right. So we got the watches for twenty-four bucks. We got the base unit, the antique tube base unit for ten bucks. We got the garbage. For zero bucks and i paid 55 for the cool brochures and these are going to go pretty well I, i'm going to have to wait for the right person but those are pretty cool i have seen these it's like calling a it's like a fake rolex it's called a real lex or something oh like r-i-o-l-i-e-x -O still on watches it's funny it's very funny yeah, i like collecting those okay uh totally different deal and we actually uh we scored a possible mega thousand dollar i'm not going to give details on that but we made a contact on some some non-camera stuff so what what is this camera piece pretty nice camera this was made in the that 1940s that doesn't really look like a camera it looks like a it's a rail monorail camera it looks like a train monorail camera it's like a dumbbell this is the grover the highest end model they made burke and james chicago Made these from the 30s, probably through the 50s. That lens is good. Lens is good. It's a wide-angle lens and actually not as bad condition as the rest of the camera would lead you to believe. And actually, Greg less in nice shape. But it's rusted. This guy, this was his camera back in the 50s. Right. Which is pretty crazy when you think of this was his camera back in the 50s because he was pretty, he must be pretty old at that point. So the rail setup is one of the top-end possible rail setups oh, yeah. ever? The Grover was the top-end model. Okay. I mean, it's got this really fancy bearing thing, and I mean, it's it's an octagonal rail, I think. It's an octagon. It's, instead of being like well, circular, no, it's six, thin, six I didn't count it. I was six. guessing. And then the lens <laughs> is really probably something we would sell separate. Yep. He says he has more lenses. Doesn't remember where he put them. So. Yeah, we're gonna visit with him yep. again. And then was there another lens from an enlarger in? Here? Yeah, there was, and this is really interesting. This is Federal Manufacturing Company, and let's see, it's right there. Also, he's pushing this up the table. There it is. This came off one of their cameras. At the time, they made cameras and they made enlargers. They used the same lens on their enlargers and their cameras, which is really funny. So somebody will repurpose that. I've set these differently. They're rolling off there. Yeah, that's fine. I don't care if you roll that one off as much as yeah, the other ones. Yeah, careful. Anyway, the federal camera's there. I found one loose a while back. I was like, how the heck did this come off the camera? I mean, the camera, it's really attached to that. That's where it came from. It's an enlarging lens. Right. Cool. So uh, this packet of goodies, there's a some marbles and German some, marbles from the 40s or something. sort of weird oil lamp thing yep and then this camera and lens 30 bucks 30 bucks yeah. it took some pretty serious negotiation once again well it really wasn't negotiation it's yeah. just the guy just everybody 
an old gentleman. Everybody was trying to buy stuff from the guy, mm -hmm. and it was actually just trying to get him to settle down and, yeah. and work with us. Okay, yep. so along with that, we also discovered these little items. And you look at these, and you're like, well, what are these? Salt shakers? Pick them up. They're really heavy. Yeah, and so and the guy yeah, the guy talked to us. He also had a couple <coughs> old wooden school school desks. You probably can't read that. So this is a number 60, and on the bottom, that's not a very good example. These need to be cleaned up. Uh, on the bottom, and some of these are in good shape, and some are parts ones. Bakelite, which breaks. It says like Bakelite 60. And it's glass and bakelite, and it is an ink well, ink holder. And so on the wooden school desks, you'd have a hole in the corner before there were pencils and pens, and this thing would sit in the hole. And this is the ink for the students for their dip pens, or dip pens, pens. pens where they used. And you can look these up under bakelite 60 ink. And here's a maybe a later one, maybe an earlier one. This actually is white lettering, American Seating Company, number yeah. 60. Yeah, they're all number 60, so they fit in the hole. Uh, look these up, though. We have never, uh, never really thought it through. We've seen plenty of the wooden desks out the there. You might pick a couple of these up or find a couple of these. We have probably 30 good ones and probably another 20 parts ones for 100 bucks. Yep. And you think, whoa, that's a lot of money. Well, look them up. Uh, they go for 10 15 each. So we have 40 right here, and then however many parts ones. Yeah, and I don't know exactly how I'm going to sell them. but uh, That's a quick estimate, but that's pretty much accurate. That is, a really good, that is a really good deal, and they sell well in lots of two or four. Uh, there weren't, I don't think, any lots bigger than that. But if you haven't seen these, now what, what era would you think these are from? I don't actually know. I'd say anywhere from the turn of the century to like 1930. I, they had to have been phased up by 1930 with pencils becoming really popular. Yeah. That's my opinion. I mean, maybe there were still things needed to ink, but yeah. I don't know. So these came up, you know, when they, when they closed the school and they took the stuff out of the basement in this town, these were, these were bought up. Bakelite is a really 20s material, though, so that actually would make more sense if it was around there. They might have used them for a while, but yeah. uh, th this amount of these, it's just phenomenal. I mean, these are... 42 of those and 12 of those by my count. These are great, so I'm going to yep. have to clean these up, but uh, that's, a, that's just unbelievable. Yeah. Okay, um, 24 bucks for three Beat dealer promo cars, friction cars. Uh, I'll make good money on those. I like picking those up. I didn't even bargain with the lady. This was at an antique store, mm -hmm. and I just love picking those up. But you know, they're they're not in great shape, but they're cool. And somebody will use these for collection or diorama. Nice shape. They go for crazy money. Oh yeah, they always do. But they're just not a lot of them for nice shape. Yep. The, I'll pick those up all day long. I love picking those things up. Okay, and then so we showed you the Bose speakers, and we told you that this guy was having some. He we put it together with bits and pieces. We think he was a trucker for 40, 45 years and then somehow found his sweetheart, mm -hmm. this cute little German lady. <laughs> I don't know how to really describe her, but bus, nice they, German lady. they moved nice. out of the big city and they moved out in the middle of nowhere and they seem to be in love in, in Nirvana or something. And they're just like getting rid of everything that they brought together i i don't know but i told you that the bose speakers and that little car were 30 bucks right yep okay so i'm looking at the rest of these this car collection that this guy has and i'm looking at it and he goes oh there's some big ones down there whatever and i'm looking at them and they all say made in china with these little stickers mm -hmm. under them I'm like, eh, made in China stuff. And, uh. and, and okay, I'm, I'm naive and dumb. So I'm looking at him, and he keeps saying, and Wheeler caught this, he keeps saying what? Danbury Mint. He keeps saying Danbury Mint. He's talking I'm, to somebody else about these cars. And I'm like, I'm, I'm talking this other guy out of it, too. I'm like, I just got this really cool one. Here, look at it. He's like, oh, that is cool, that little model, that Ferrari. Yeah. 
and I'm talking them out of them. I'm going, oh, they're all Chinese. They're just Chinese. I hate the Chinese stuff. I'm like, it's so cheap. You know, it's, they make repros or everything, da 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 So I, I talked myself out of it, and I talked this guy out of it. But in the back of my mind, two things are going at me. One, one is this guy's giving away stuff cheap. And even if they are made in China, I mean, he's probably going to give them away to me. So maybe I should look at them. But then we walk away. And then the other thing in the back of my mind is Danbury Mint. What is this Danbury Mint? It sounds like, it sounds like what? I don't know, Franklin Mint? It sounds like Franklin Mint. Yeah. And I have had Franklin Mint cars that I've sold for 50, 60 bucks, okay? Mm -hmm. So I go, I, we go back to the Jeep, we look it up, and we're like, whoa. <laughs> well, yeah, the initial impression was insane. Well, they make these big cars. Yep, and they also make one, normal cars that are limited editions. One twelve, one twelve scale, mm -hmm. that are like a thousand bucks, and then and then they make these one twenty four scale cars that range from four hundred all the way down to, yep. the, you know, maybe twenty or they thirty. They also make pewter cars. So they make all these cars. They're high detail. They are made in China. Yep, crafted in China and also crafted in Korea. Earlier, I guess say a couple different factories. But anyway, go look up Danbury Mint. Either best match. Highest to lowest, you can look at sold compared to listed. I mean, it's insane. The market is crazy. Yeah, right? so I'm, at that point, I don't really want to go back to this guy. But I go back and I'm like, hey, okay, how much for the box? And he thought for like 30, 45 seconds of silence. I was watching from the Jeep. I was like, what's going on over there? Intense negotiation? I was trying to figure out He was out just what was silent. And he just, he's just, yeah. he's like, I can tell he's, afterwards, I'm like, he must be just letting go of these. Because he must yeah. have really been in love with them. But he goes, he goes, 20 bucks. I'm like, okay, I'll take him. <laughs> so. Okay. Okay, so Danbury Mint. Um, these are, you know, they're very cool, but they're very fragile. They're and there's fragile. pieces. So they're like this, you know. The steering racks actually work. I mean, they're the they're doors insane. open. All the doors open. The windows probably roll down for all I know. I There's mean, all these cool cars from the 30s, 40s, 50s. There's Chitty Chitty Bang Bang Mustang and Mustang over there from the 60s. Mustang and all Duesenbergs and you know old Mercedeses. So there's 15 of these. All the 20, there's a couple of the same ones with broken parts. The windshields all pop out. Mercedes 300 SL, that's a sweet guy. Going Mercedes. Yep. So look these things up. Oh, there's a piece yeah. coming off of it. And uh, there's 15 of them here. There's a piece down here. Yep, they fall apart, but <sighs> that's normal. That's yeah, not really a piece. I don't know what that is. So there's 15 of them. Uh, you look them up. We're not going to say what they're worth. But this is $20 for the 15 of those. And then there was some other... There's a cool one. Mm -hmm. There's some other small ones. Yep, those are Franklin Mint. Have a look those up. There is a other couple of Franklin... not Franklin Mint. There's, there's a couple of Franklin Mints of other ones. Then there were these goofy things, like coin banks that are worth nothing. But I forgot. <laughs> I'd also put you off to the whole lot. Well, that put that was on top. Uh -huh. So this this was not displayed well, and so it just looked like junk. We were looking through his boxes that were they're out in the public sale, but I mean they're just boxes full of stuff. So he, he didn't really want to sell them. Yeah. And so these funny uh, coin banks, I didn't look inside or anything until we got home. I didn't buy Lizzie and Sam anything, but inside the coin banks were a whole bunch of you know semi semi cool. Hot Wheels, which means I've got presents for the kids, and they can play with them out in, in the sandbox. And then I got some cologne for, for Wheeler. Ah. We'll throw those out. Yeah, perfume. Yeah, perfume. Sure. So, yeah, like I said, look these up, but um, I don't know if I'll sell them in a lot or I'll sell them individually, but they're, they're, they're probably average conservatively. 30 35 each with some of them going for double that maybe mm -hmm. uh we did not it doesn't we didn't look them all up did nope. we nope looked all up half of them we got a pretty good feel for them i mean these are from what i can tell these are a little bit earlier they quit production in 2012 they made a lot of limited edition a yeah. lot of fancy edition i don't know yeah. exactly why we didn't look them all up there are some you know they come in boxes and things like that, that i think they're the later ones though. that go for more who more. who knows uh the it's one of these things though that we didn't really know about and i stayed away from just because i don't like cheap chinese crap 
crafted in China. Well, crafted in China. Here's here's the telling factor that right away uh, made me excited about them. Three thousand listed. Yeah. Give or take. Yep. Six thousand sold. That's it. Yep. <laughs> so twenty bucks to whatever, right? And also, I'd say seventy percent of them are listed at auction. They're sold at auction. I mean, that's crazy. Yeah. So it's that's a big. Crazy. It's just a flow through. It is. All right. Yeah, wow, what a long-winded... Well, that long. What a long-winded dealer. Wow, I didn't feel that long, but sure. Well, it's fun sharing this stuff. It is. So that's it for the haul. Uh, we went out looking to buy whatever we found, not go overboard. All in all, we might have spent, I don't know, a thousand bucks, something like that. I, haven't, I don't have the tally. I have it on my phone. But seriously good stuff. And... Fun stuff. Uh, we work pretty hard. There's no doubt that we work pretty hard. Okay, so uh, I think I put a video introduction on this and a closing on this. So that's that for this. See you, Wheeler. Bye. Hey, Wheeler. Dealer Production. <laughs>